Hey guys, welcome to another soap making video. This is Jamie at Soap Authority and today I'm going to show you how I make three layer soap using my faster moving deer tallow soap recipe without it turning into a big gloppy mess. Without further delay, let's get soaping. Here I have some lavender essential oil and I'm going to be using that for my top layer since the fragrance oil I'll be adding turns brown and I need my top layer to stay a lavender color for this soap. I'm really excited because I also have a special secret ingredient that I'll be using towards the end of this video that was sent to me by one of my super awesome subscribers. I'm also using lavender essential oil in the middle layer and this layer is going to act as a barrier layer to keep my discoloring fragrance oil from bleeding into my lavender layer on the top and ruining it. The third scent I'm going to be using is black amber and lavender fragrance oil. This is going to discolor my soap to a tan brown color and I'll be using that as my base fragrance and it's going to fragrance about 60% of the soap. For my top layer, I'll be using Iris Purple Mica. For a lighter, more pastel purple, I would have added some titanium dioxide to that top layer with this, but I want to see how it looks all by itself. Now, the middle layer will be colored with mocha brown, and I've already mixed that because it was left over from another batch of soap that I just made. And the brown will hide any color bleed from the bottom layer with the discoloring fragrance since this is for my barrier layer. For the bottom layer, I've got activated charcoal, and this is great for problem skin, but not only that, it's not going to be affected by the discoloration of the black amber and lavender fragrance oil, which makes it really nice to hide that discoloration. Now, I'm being really careful with the charcoal because it has a lot of static, and you don't want to get this on anything if you can help it. See how I'm mixing it in this tall cup? In its powdered form, it tends to be difficult to clean up, but when you use it correctly in soap, it's going to lather a white or a really light gray, and that's not going to cause any staining problems, which is nice. The key to getting even layers is having a thinner pouring consistency, but waiting until each layer is firm enough to pour the next layer without having the soap break through and mess up your lines. This is almost impossible with a fast moving recipe like the one I'm using here. By the time the first layer is set up enough, the second and third layers will be way too thick and it'll turn into a large gloppy mess. Now to prevent this, I'm dividing both my lye water and oils into three separate parts and mixing them completely separate. The first step is to divide the lye water. I do this by percentages and weigh out what I need for each. Just make sure that when you do this, you subtract the weight of your container before you weigh it. Now that I have my lye water divided three ways, I'm going to put these lids on and set them aside. I follow the same procedure to divide out my melted oils. If you're worried you'll get them mixed up, you can always label each container with a sticky note. Now, for this batch of soap, I split the soap into 60% for the base, 20% for the middle layer, and 20% for the top layer. As long as you know the total weight of your lye solution and the total weight of your oils, you can simply multiply each by the percentage to get the weights for each of your containers. For example, if your lye solution weighs 18.5 ounces, you would multiply that by 60% to get your base amount, 20% 
to get your middle layer amount and 20% for your top layer amount. It's the same thing with your oils. Just use your total oil weight. It's time to mix and the first layer I'm making is my activated charcoal layer. It's the base of my soap and I'll be using the black amber and lavender fragrance oil here. Now I'm making my second layer and this is my barrier layer. For this I'm using my mocha brown mica and my lavender essential oil. The lavender essential oil doesn't discolor and this thin layer is the one that's going to keep any discoloration from bleeding into my lavender colored top layer. As you can see, I got this layer a little too thick before I poured it. It doesn't want to lay down flat. On the upside, I guess it looks like chocolate pudding, and chocolate pudding is a good thing. It reminds me of when I was a kid, my grandma used to make homemade fudge sickles using cook and serve chocolate pudding. She would freeze them in old Tupperware popsicle molds and have them ready for us when we would go to visit every August. For the third and last layer, I am adding my iris purple mica and my lavender essential oil. I covered up my lavender layer to let it firm up a bit and now I'm going to texture it and I'm going to use a plastic fork to put some lines across the top.
Now, I told you at the beginning of this video that I had something special to add to this soap, and I'm going to show that to you now. So excited about this. One of my lovely subscribers totally made my day when she sent me this package in the mail. I didn't know what it was at first since I order a lot of stuff online. What happens with me is I'll order a lot of stuff online and then by the time it gets delivered to my place, usually I've already forgotten what I've ordered. So I really didn't know that I had this waiting for me. So this was really cool. So I opened this package and to my surprise, Susan from Labyrinth Hill Lavender sent me a highly fragrant package of lavender that she grew in her own lavender fields. This is seriously the best lavender I've ever smelled. And Susan happens to be a master gardener and, of course, lavender expert, and she teaches others how to grow and market their own lavender. What I'll do is I'll leave a link to her website and her YouTube channel below so you can see just how awesome she is. Now, I'm going to use some of Susan's lavender to dress up the edge of my soap. So what I've done is I put my cardboard cover over part of the top of the soap to keep the lavender right where I want it. And I'm not going to add all of the lavender to the entire top of the soap because number one, it'll cover up some of my texture. And number two, I really need to save some of that lavender for regular sniffing. The soap has set up for a day and now I'm going to cut it and see how it looks inside. I'm putting the soap loaf on its side because the wires can and will drag those buds through the soap when cutting and a side cut will eliminate this. The lines look pretty nice, but not perfect. You can tell where I got carried away stick blending with the brown layer. Can you see how there's soda ash on the top here? That's from the lavender essential oil, and I didn't do enough of a water discount either. So if you can reduce your water amount enough, you can actually completely avoid soda ash on top of your soap, unless you add an ingredient that causes the problem. And this is what you get to do if you have a couple of broken wires on your soap cutter. That's it for this round of soap making. If you found this video helpful and want to learn more about soap making, light up that like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell. And yes, my poor soap cutter will be getting its wires replaced soon, I promise. I'm going to be uploading a video that shows you exactly how I do that. My base recipe for this project is listed below along with a written explanation and example of the math I use to make my three layer soap. See you next time.